It was only a matter of time until we 30 k so hard out of that other game we cover on this channel that we found ourselves in Faerun. Run. The infamous continent within the material plane of the Forgotten Realms, which is arguably the most generic as it can possibly get, but that's not necessarily a bad thing, Tolkien-esque fantasy setting ever. Created as early as 1967 by Ed Greenwood and soon after adapted as one of the primary settings for classic tabletop Dungeons & Dragons role-playing adventure games. Since then, the Forgotten Realms has served as the backdrop for a fuckload of novels, a not-so-shitty movie, and a host of video game titles, including 99 91's Neverwinter Nights, which was literally the first multiplayer role-playing title to have graphics. Handsome viewers, surely this must mean that Larian Studios are treading on truly hallowed ground here, as the greatest grandfather of gaming's fabled setting would only accompany absolute masterpiece productions that are developed with only the utmost respect for such an esteemed IP. It seems that aside from Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 and a handful of other titles, the only other license treated with this amount of care when it comes to making totally astonishing video game adaptations must be Warhammer 40k. Sure, there's a decent blood diamond in the rough now and then, but they are certainly few and far between. And now we finally have the recently released bloody lump of pure carbon, Baldur's Gate 3. Holy shit void dude, I cannot hear you exclaim, an early access title on Steam that actually managed to claw its way out of the engorged womb of perpetual early access filth that plagues everyone's favorite PC gaming platform. Yes, I am genuinely as shocked as you are. But void dude, Larian Studios are different. <laughs> Their last two games demonstrated a tried and true pedigree. They don't milk the stagnant pond of early access malignancy for every cent possible without ever releasing an actually finished product like all the other developers. Yes, handsome viewer, I would totally agree, but let's not forget that CD Projekt Red was seen in a similar light not too long ago. Trust no one. However, it does appear to be the case that Larian Studios may be the only developers in existence who utilize the early access feature for game development on Steam the way God intended. <laughs> in that they actually use the early access period to get feedback from players, develop and improve the game, and then, you know, actually release the game. My opinion is worth less than stringy goat vomit though, because if you just look at any other video on this channel, which if you're new here, you should absolutely not do that until the end of this video, because I will lose all potential credibility, you will see just how much shit I put up with from a certain other video game when it comes to actually playing and making content, and you would come to the correct conclusion that I probably hate myself quite a bit. Therefore, in an effort to hate myself ever so slightly less, we're stretching my YouTube content creation wings like a f***ing whatever the fuck that thing is and milking other games now for glorious content. So join me, handsome viewers, as we play and discuss the third entry in the Baldur's Gate series of epic role-playing games, which strangely lacks a subtitle like its predecessor, Baldur's Gate 2 Shadows of Arm. But not to worry, I have provided a few options for Lorien Studios' third iteration to needlessly pad out this intro even further. Baldur's Gate 3, the f***ing of Faerun. Do you hate little sketchy tiefling bastard children? Then you'll love Baldur's Gate 3, f*** that child of the Sword Coast in particular. Have you ever wondered what a scantily clad voluptuous ogress looks like while a bugbear buggers her from behind? Then you'll love Baldur's Gate 3 by all the gods, why? Do you enjoy missing literally every shot you take? Oh, oh f there was an 88% chance that, I'm, that I just whiffed. Except for the shot you take when trying to get into the pants of an extra planar entity from the sea of infinite astral stars. Then you'll f***ing love Baldur's Gate 3. If its back faces the sun, then I'm going to cut. Let's begin! First things first, don't be like me. Make sure you turn comic dice off. For those of you that are too f***ing zoomer to waste two minutes of your precious lives perusing a brand new game's menu options to configure an optimal playing experience for yourselves, what Lorian Studios have dubbed comic dice is the option for the game to automatically manipulate dice rolls behind the scenes to avoid both failure and success streaks while maintaining the feeling of being random. 
If you're new to this type of RPG experience, then allow me to explain that the outcome of practically every action performed by you, your party members, NPCs, and just about everything else in the world is determined by the roll of some almighty dice. Very many games have used similar systems in the past, but Baldur's Gate 3 has just quite literally digitized the most modern version of the popular tabletop Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition rule set and made the presentation of the way it handles dice rolls much more obvious. Fully embracing these mechanics in all of their turn-based glory as opposed to hiding them behind real-time action mechanics like so many titles before. Put simply, the comic dice option is for useless babies. If you're an adult, turn that shit off and embrace true random. Secondly, we ensure that we're playing on tactician mode because I want this game to fuck me harder than that bugbear buggered that lavishly bucks some ogress. And finally, we gather our party before venturing forth to character creation. Speaking of characters joining us on this epic quest of epic proportions for our first foray into Baldur's Gate 3, we have It's Not Bear. You're a bear. I'm a bear now. Nerve the shooty elf girl boy. Nice. Sick. Holy shit, Woof. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> they had voice acting. <laughs> and Uberclops, the dirty university despised, uncouth and all-round disgusting drow rogue, who probably got kicked out of Lothite society in the underdock because of how dirty, universally despised, uncouth and disgusting he is. Why can I not pickpocket any of you? Larian Studios have also integrated a rather novel dialogue voting Twitch integration system into the game that lets streamers' chats vote on dialogue options as they come up in real time. During this amazing adventure, however, I decided to take chat's involvement one step further and encouraged my modest viewership to decide my doomed to fail co op character's gender, race, class, and appearance as well. What could possibly go wrong? Do I do character creation so long with my chat? See if they want to get involved with the shit. Okay, chat, I'm going to run a poll. Do you guys see the, the poll, chat? If you interact with the poll, you'll get prizes. Uberclops was generous enough to set up like a whole slew of prizes for the stream tonight. So DM Uberclops. I'm joking, there's no prizes. I'm just watching the cinematic. Everybody said male. Current poll, big or small? Big. Hell yeah, boys. Let's go big. Go big or go f yourselves. It was between Githyanki, Drow, Tiefling, Half Orc. Okay, I guess we're in Half Orc. Can we be like a bull? Round three, that's fine. Makeup. Don't really need makeup. Hair. Chat bold or hair? I think the orc looks pretty fing sick. No hair. Bold, please. Let's go. Dude, there's so many options. What the actual hell? Oh, f chat said hair. That's literally that same hair as me, guys. Just about nothing left. How about Void if it's orange, guys? Can get behind orange. F yeah, dude, let's do orange. <laughs> the ginger orc. <laughs> yeah, okay, guys are saying they like this. We're gonna go with this. Facial hair. Guys, beard or no beard? Beard, big beard. Gotta do the beard. Bro, it's going beard. Same color as the hair, or is it a different colored fucking beard? It looks like me. <laughs> I wish my beard was this fucking epic, dude. Oh, the poll's still going. Man, a minute is a really long time. Ginger beard, extra ginger power. Okay, I think chat has spoken, bro. F the poll. Where do I choose my class? Okay, this is the most important decision, chat. Let's do it. Keep in mind, we've got Druid and Ranger so far and Rogue, right? Bob, Fighter, Hanny, Bard, Cleric, Warlock, Wizard, Sork, Monk. Jesus Christ. I, like, I'm, I'm actually going to omit Bard. Please don't... Guys, chat, chat, please don't... What's the dumbest character? Probably a Bard. I think I want to start with a Bard. The Ginger Bard Orc. <laughs> the, it's, it's in chat's hands, bro. The poll's gone. That somebody f***ing said it. Now it's a thing. And now everybody's going to say Bard. I know how the internet works. I've been around for a while. I actually do love bards. The idea of using music to cast spells is like my all-time fantasy. Bard, cleric, warlock. Okay, let's draw that down. I wonder what it's going to be. It's like, look how cool Bob Guys, guys. This is the class. Oh my god. Warlock, fuck yes, dude. <laughs> yes, let's go. Let's go. Bound by a pact to an all-powerful patron, warlocks trade their loyalty for supernatural abilities and unique f***ing magic. We start with Eldritch Blast, Blade Ward, and Warlock Spell Slots. I'm so f***ing happy right now. Let's go, chat. Yay, sorry guys. I didn't realize Discord was muted this whole time. No, all good. Should I pick anything utility or should I go pure damage? Pure damage. Okay. Ask chat. Okay, background. Oh, dude, it's 100% gonna be criminal. Fake space money entertainer. Okay, cool. Entertainer it is. Um, abilities. Oh, f you get to change points around. I didn't think that they Dude, added I, I left mine on default for now. 
We're super smooth rain. We're gonna go down to eight intelligence. 12, 12, 15. I'm gonna be dumb as f but I'm a warlock, so it's okay. It's an interesting uh, choice. Let's see how that goes. Which is gonna be damage. massive damage with like horrible chances of success. Deception. No, I'm not very deceptive. Religion, yeah, sure. Deception, I guess we're deceitful. History and investigation. Oh f I'm gonna choose two. Deception and religion. Cool, I'm done. This we're gonna just randomize. 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Great. And thanks to the hive mind of Twitch chat, I present you with Jinji Minji, the soulless half orc warlock who high fives his friends by clapping and whose drapes may or may not match the carpet because I'm new to Twitch streaming and checked off the nudity button because I have no idea if this flaming orc warlock schlong would incur the wrath of Twitch's terms of service. Show nudity. This adventure contains mature and sensitive subject matter. F is this against TOS? But I like nudity. Nudity is like one of the greatest things on earth. What the f***? Again? We're in some Mind Flayers Nautiloid now, and as you know, all good ships have a name, so I decided to call this one... Oh shit! Can, can we talk to each other? No. Bro, this looks darker than Early Access, huh? Yeah. By a lot, this is epic. Someone else got out. Oh, I do not sound like an orc at all. Jinji Minji begins his quest. <laughs> <laughs> the tale of Jinji Minji, the warlock orc. <laughs> quite a fellow. No one ever did meet an orc quite like him in their lives. Oh shit. Uh, fair attacked, uber clops your sword. He's a hazard and a danger to society. Can you turn into a bird and just f*** off? Like, how far can you go yet. away from the body? I don't have that yet, unfortunately. Dude, I'm so excited for this game, holy shit. Oh, yeah. Like, dude, playing this part in early access, I just thought to myself, like, f this does not feel like Baldur's Gate. But the amount of changes that they've done to the lighting and stuff, this is excellent, dude. I'm gonna stab it. Those are the cutscenes, I didn't even know what's going on. Yeah, I got the loot, bro, don't worry. Are you guys seen the cutscene? Nope. Oh, uh, no. Oh, oh you uh, click if I click on yeah. You've come to save us from this place. Does chat, do you get to vote you? Who gets to roll? You. Voidy. Is that because, like, why though? I don't know. Can you guys, can you guys assist? Wait for Voidy. Uh, I cannot assist you with a dice roll. Okay, well, first dice roll, guys. Let's go. Ooh. Easy game. Baby game. The brain lifts from the skull. Do you notice an opportunity? That beard. That's exactly what my beard does. We can mutilate the brain. <laughs> Jeez, what's wrong with you people? It's just a cute little brain. Do you not hear it? We will not survive here. We are needed to navigate. We are needed to leave this realm. All right, let's go. <laughs> I just want to check my options and see if the Twitch thing's engaged. What the fuck? <laughs> Dude, that... This is your end. This is so much cooler than early access, dude. Yeah, dude. Is it really different? <laughs> yeah. Holy fuck. Big time. Yeah, dude, this, the cinematic sucked in early access. Oh, really? Yeah, they've really upped their game on this. Except for my fucking beard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, there's Twitch. Let's start a community for this choice. Oh, nice, guys. So, so they can't actually control it. So they just influence the decision. It does kind of look like Thrall, bro. Hell yeah. Thrall's crazy cousin who peroxided his face and beard and hair. <laughs> okay, so you guys are the tiebreakers because it's 33% on one and two. Dude, this is so cool. We carry mind flayer parasites. When they said they improved the cinematics, I'd like, what? Oh, I get to control us. Yeah. Oh, is it simultaneous turns? Only 5% to hit. Does anybody have any abilities to like talk to the dead and shit like that? Uh, mm. not me. I'm animals. This yeah. whole segment is a bit different, right? No, I believe this is the same. It's been three years since I played, so... Been that long? I mean, shit. It happens. Dead. Okay, there we go. But he's totally Click on him. <laughs> I missed the dead body. Okay, so now I started this chat with the person in the... Mind player tube. Oh, I've got to click on you. There's like an ear song. You're the one talking. Yeah. I can't allow chat to vote on this. Yeah, I can always just click the button. Oh, do you still have it there? Okay. Yep. Hurry! Please! Did you get a drow specific option there? Yeah, it was like being evil. I, f I pressed the button on the alien ship. I'm gonna sneak attack. 
Does but anyone have a uh, lockpick? Camp supply stack alchemy. I do, yes. Kitchen. Oh, seriously? Get us the loot, Tristan. It's locked, yes, I get it. Seriously. Critical success. <laughs> I really f***ing opened that lock. <laughs> you opened the f*** out of that <laughs> box, bro. So do we need to go through a sphincter, maybe? Um... Oh, gold key. They yeah. go touch the panel here. I don't think the key is gonna work, bro. Yeah, it's, like, it's, it's like a key for humans. Key. This is an alien ship. Warlock Bing. Arcana, there's magic at work here. Dude, I can do shit. Sorry, chat, this one's on me. F*** it's an intelligence it's a minus one. one intelligence. <laughs> <sighs> oh my god, dude. <laughs> One. Who needs wisdom, right? <laughs> the magic's configuration is like nothing you know. Nausea climbs further up your throat the longer you try to discern its nature. There was another push option in that other room that we went to. I'll go try that quickly. Console appears dormant. Hit it. Mind flare pod in my room starting to get... Yeah, I've, I've, I've got your um, concealed cinematic. I think she just melted. <laughs> Holy f bro. What happened? The chick inside the pot over here. Not not Shadow Heart, the other chick over here. She melted. Bruh. 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 What, the one that we were trying to save? No, the other chick. Oh, it became a newborn mind flare. Yeah, I've got a dice roll for Arcana. Oh shit, don't transform into a f***ing mind flare, bro. Okay, here's the dice roll. So... I've got wisdom, so... Oh! oh. Um, authority. Oh, we're all gonna try this now to beat the two. <laughs> oh, that was easy. <laughs> Difficulty class two. Was this yeah. a DC two check? Fair, fair and fair roll the one, dude. Yeah. I know, but is it a DC two check? Oh my god, we actually saved her. Yeah. Plenty of fighting ahead. <laughs> all right, let's get going. I'm Boydy. <laughs> <laughs> like good. and subscribe to Boydy Vids, Shadow Heart. Let's go. <laughs> I think I'll take my chances alone if it's all the same. All right, I guess we go to the helm now. To the helm. Not now. Connect the nerves of the transponder. Do it. Connect the nerves. F yeah, us. Big strike here with this chick. Four to thirteen, dude. This game's easy. What the f cool. Yeah, come okay. in. Strike as a reaction. I oh, dazed him, dude. F yes. The spelling uh, effects are so intense. Nice, 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 nice. Wait, you, you shot the mind flare. <laughs> oh, f Are we going for the demon? Can we heal the mind flare? Because he's like a tank right now, right? <laughs> oh, dude, this guy's no joke, bro. He's no joke. One spamming Eldritch Blast, right? <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, goddammit. Did that take you out? Are you dead? 126 hit points, guys. He's gonna kill us. No, he's not. We're gonna kill him. No, he's gonna kill us. No, we're gonna kill him. No, but what about us? I don't feel like we've got many options here, boys. Let's do it. I'm downed, uh, so I don't know. I think it's oh, like wow. a help. Oh. I pushed him. Oh, I don't want to be there. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, we need heals on the mind flare. That's, that's what we need. Shoot them. Dude, Oof. mind flare is not looking great. No. He survived on one. Oof. I can heal myself, but I can't heal. I can heal the mind flare on my next turn. Can we give the mind flare a potion? Um, can I throw it at him? I'm going to throw it at the mind flare and see if it heals him. Seems like the best way. Oh, there we go. Hey, nice. what's nice. up? Nice. Oh, f I, I ran too far forward. Uh -oh. Uh oh. There's more monsters in the fight now. I'm so sorry. Cancel my move. There's oh, another shit. Cambion. I'd like I'm combined as well. Oh, there goes the mind flare too. Uh, oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> Revivify. I'm gonna run away. Yeah. Okay, uh, if I move away, it's gonna attack me. Um, yeah, so don't worry, dude. I got you. Check this out. Yay! Oh, nice. Hooray! <laughs> cool. Um. Okay, I think we just Five need to reach the transponder. Room. Okay, got it. Nice. You've made it in time. Uh, this is where it becomes a hentai, right? Sorry, but this might actually be worse. <laughs> what an unfortunate <laughs> place for a rock to hit you. Beards, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
As Jinji Minji, the soulless orc warlock, comes to his senses on this beach, let's take a moment to discuss the special magic source that Larian Studios have concocted that seems to be driving Baldur's Gate 3's success. Amid a gaming landscape that is inarguably suffocating us on an endless putrid stream of titles plagued by botched releases, incomplete features, relentless microtransactions, and in-game real money shops that not only rip you off but rip you out of what otherwise could potentially be immersive and decent gaming experiences, as well as a permeating overall lack of quality, polish, and passion. That's not to say that Larian Studios are devoid of these types of practices, however. There does exist a digital deluxe version of Baldur's Gate 3 that includes some novelties and in-game items, but their attitude towards this type of practice appears to be the polar opposite of what has become the industry standard. The digital deluxe edition uh, is coming to everybody who bought the game in early access. So you're going to get all of that content for free, you're not going to have to uh, buy anything. You're going to get the digital bard song pack, the exclusive dice, treasures from Rivalon, uh, adventurous pouch, and a bunch of bonus digital content all for free. Man, what great value. Speaking of value, Baldur's Gate 3 presents the player with three difficulty modes when you start the game. Explorer mode for babies, balanced mode for slightly older babies, and tactician mode for soulless orc warlocks and my solo character that I've been playing solo on the side. Simon, the big black dragonborn lizard boy is a xenomorph inspired acid shit bro that's cool wild magic barbarian cross wild magic sorcerer whose heterochromatic eyes act as a brand awareness campaign for voidy vids voidy vids branding dude let's do it and when he rages casts a spell or simply glances in the wrong direction he can end up shooting laser beams from his chest or exploding annihilating his entire party in fiery unfortuitousness yes void dude many games have difficulty settings what the actual f are you rambling about well as i ventured further into the game alone on simon the big black dragon born lizard boy I soon realized that every time a combat encounter started and ended, it felt kind of like a big deal. As if the opponents involved in every encounter so far weren't just haphazardly placed cannon fodder for mindlessly grinding and gaining experience levels. It felt like this was an actual tabletop RPG with the care and intuition of a human brain behind it. Like, say, a dungeon master who wants to ruin your life every time the initiative dice are rolled. The placement of enemies, the obstacles in your way, and the environment itself felt very intentional and curated, offering multiple methods of approach, encouraging creativity, and leaving room for varying degrees of success that could make the encounter after your current one that much harder or easier. Don't get me wrong, I'm sure there are many examples of games that do this well. Baldur's Gate 3 is not exactly unique in this regard, and you can reduce the difficulty of an encounter by blowing through all your resources that take the form of finite spell slots, items, abilities, and whatever else that has been adapted from the Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition rule set. But this isn't always ideal as you need to long rest and consume dwindling camp supplies to recharge everything back to maximum so you can keep trudging through the utter hellscape that is the Forgotten Realms. Eventually catching up on Larian's last panel from hell confirmed my suspicions. Every encounter is not only incredibly well thought out and designed by an actual human being, but on tactician mode things are taken to the next level with even more deadly elements intentionally thrown into the mix to maximize the stakes and provide the player with even more meaningful decisions to make. This must be why I'm enjoying Baldur's Gate 3 so much. Every time combat starts it feels like someone is trying their hardest to ruin my day, and for one it's not Chris, it's this guy. What is the philosophy of combat in our game? Because our combat is not just something I just drop a couple of guys and I see what happens. There's a lot of engineering that goes into the creation of every single encounter that you're going to have. Is it about 300 or something like that? Oh, I've long since forgotten the number of combats in this game. Um, but yes, every single combat, uh, we, we don't place characters idly. Um, we have a philosophy around making each combat encounter a puzzle. Um, and well, puzzles are only solvable with the tools that you have. And what's so exciting about working in RPGs is every single party is going to have a different tool set to solve the puzzle with. It makes it very difficult to design sometimes, but uh, a lot of fun in the end. In fact, on my current playthrough with Simon, the big black dragonborn lizard boy, <laughs> I am genuinely concerned I might run out of camp supplies soon, and you know what? That would be f***ing great. To add to all of this, earlier I mentioned that there are degrees of success to the encounters throughout Baldur's Gate 3, and it's not just to do with resource conservation. When I got to the Nautiloid fight with Commander Zalk on Simon the Big Black Dragonborn Lizard Boy, 
I was aware from back in the early access days that you could in fact use some kind of strategy, tactic or ability to get the flaming sword from this demonic commander of Cambians. Fuck me. Slashing resistance, piercing resistance, bludgeoning resistance, fire resistance, lightning... Okay, it doesn't have acid resistance. Maybe we can actually put that to use here. And at the time, my Twitch chat mentioned Shadow Heart's ability, Charm. It doesn't work. Target must be a humanoid. I would love to dive into a discussion and pontificate the finer details of what constitutes a magical Avanite demon cambion commander's classification to be or not to be humanoid, but clearly it is not humanoid according to this guy. Me! But after scraping through and leveling Shadow Heart up some time later, I realized you can prepare her clerical abilities and amongst her arsenal is a known spell called Command. Remember when I said tutorials are for noobs? Show sure, tutorials no. Tutorials are for noobs. Yep, f that. Figuring this stuff out like the big black dragonborn lizard boy that I am is far more satisfying. So equipped with this new knowledge of the existence of the command spell, I decided to go back in time and dedicate my life to acquiring Commander Zulk's flaming sword, unsure if it can even be accomplished in tactician mode. Command drop. Look at my guy, what the f Look at this beast. Yes, one more. Oh, that stung. Okay, um, fuck, he's dead. Oh my god, they're dead, dude, dude they're dead. Leave him alone. So brutal. <laughs> We're dead. There's no way, there's no way we survive. What do you guys say to one more try? I need to, I need to uh, focus on my distinguishing factors here if the channel's gonna grow, right? Oh my god, dude, please just make this roll. Mind flare. Yes, dude. Commander Zulk lies dead at our feet, his demonic life essence converted to 75 XP per party member, and the ever burned blade rests firmly in Simon the Big Black Dragonborn Lizard Boy's scaly grip. And it only took one try. Was it worth it? Probably not. You need a cure. Why can I not pickpocket any of you? I mean, you can pickpocket fair and nerve. You don't know them that well. Oh, let's I away. Found a, I found a bucket of fish. Um, Tristan, come here. Check this quickly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got to be careful, boys. <gasps> Ancient doors locked. Do rogue things, bro. Lockpick. DT 20, holy shit. I made 20. There we go. Unlocked. So we level up. See uh, there's a trap and I don't have a trap disarm toolkit. Oh, we're just busy leveling up quickly, bro. Should we all short rest? Yeah, probably a good idea. Is it like a thing we can do? Uh, time to get going. So, ancient door. Is it open now? Yep. There's the vent on the floor. Oh, shit. Um, <clears throat> oh, f should we... Can you ping over the vent? He's standing dead still. How do you see these, bro? I'm a rogue. <laughs> <laughs> You're just walking around, it's just like perception fail, perception fail. Do you want the scroll of burning hands? Bro, unironically, my character's portrait looks f***ing badass, dude. I've got a heavy key. Too real. Failed. <laughs> <It's> failed. <laughs> Too real. Oh, there's another button. I'm impressive. Oh, f***. You've doomed us all, Tristan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're oh, Concentrate on it. So the Dude, nice, you're a bear. I'm a bear now. <laughs> 50 hit points, are you kidding me? That's insane. I dropped to zero, I just revert. Oh my god, Druid is OP, what the f***? Druid's sick. <laughs> yeah, f*** you. <laughs> oh, oh, you the piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 you shit. Rip. <laughs> this guy's a tanky boy, huh? Yeah, but it's like, can he, can he roll below 14, please? I actually want to see his rolls. I think the game's cheating. No, it just says downed. That's Bear can't raise people. Yeah. Oh, Tristan, 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 what have you done, bro? Bruh. <laughs> oh, <friendly>. Tristan. <laughs> have you never played Dungeons and Dragons before? <laughs> what is the worth of a single mortal's life? If you get this wrong, we're all f***, bro. What, what did you say to him, bro? We have the only life that it matters is mine. Oh, he had a hundred gold in his tomb. <laughs> um, the door just closed and you went... I'm so confused, what is happening? Maybe we don't go down the chasm. I want to go down the chasm. 
There's a pathway here going. Dude, I'm gonna jump. I'm sus. Just a second. Um. A member of your adventure. Forty died. Forty died. <laughs> yeah. I jumped into the chasm. <laughs> Gingy Minji never stood a chance anyway, so let's use that fatal spelunking as a segue to talk more about the game. Visually, Baldur's Gate 3 surpassed any expectations I never actually had. In terms of the tone and overall presentation, I've been pleasantly surprised at how the final release version looks and feels much darker and moodier than the earlier days of early access that I was more familiar with. Larian Studios' lighting team and all the others involved should be commended for their efforts of bringing about such drastic change and absolutely nailing the atmosphere of a Baldur's Gate game that I think quite a few people were skeptical about Larian achieving, myself included, especially if you look at Divinity Original Sin 1 and 2, which paved the way for such skepticisms in the first place. If you hide the UI and just watch your party meander through an environment, to me it really captures some nostalgic adventure fantasy feeling that you might get from staring at your favorite fantasy artwork. Meanwhile, on my single player side, in the big black dragonborn lizard boy playthrough, I had made it far enough to start populating the game's campsite with some of the most horny companions to ever exist throughout Faerun. More like forgotten realms, am I right, Sven? We are very, very proud. Yes, nighttime at the camp in Baldur's Gate 3 is where it all suddenly turns into a virtual fantasy race romance sex simulator for some reason, or rather, it's when the fisting starts. In fact, it soon became so apparent that everything in this game wants to bed you that I even began thinking this dark and evil book of necromancy was actually just a dark and evil necromantic glory hole ready to receive three and a half inches of that's totally a good size for a big black dragonborn lizard boy's reptilian dingle dong before I could open it to discover its actual dark and evil necromantic secrets. Why do they keep f***ing all the time? When did Faerun become the red light district of the fantasy RPG genre? Why are these games so obsessed with NPC player romantic relations? Well, handsome viewer, I'll tell you what I think. Back before any of us were born, acquiring that sweet puss and or schlong in traditional old school Dungeons and Dragons came with certain benefits. You see, before the very concept of role playing Dungeons and Dragons even existed, the closest thing to a tabletop gaming experience was in the form of traditional war games, and it only made sense sense that diplomatic concepts such as securing an alliance through marital union or gaining access to resources for a campaign that might be more political in nature influenced the design of scope of possibility in very early versions of Dungeons and Dragons. More modern and official rules have since come into existence like marriage ceremonies with official spells that bestow unto the benefactors a temporary armor class bonus and modern video game interpretations of these concepts from older tabletop role playing games have just evolved alongside modern sensibilities. Sex will always sell, and sex with a bear apparently sells even better, but romance options in our RPGs today provide the narrative with a great way to not only personalize your playthrough experience a little, but also open up new quest chains and events that pertain to the characters in question. If I'm going to bump ugly these with Lazel, there better be a rideable dragon mount in my very near future. Speaking of which, the CRPGs of yore always felt like they appealed to a pretty niche audience, so I still can't help but feel a bit surprised that Baldur's Gate 3 is performing so well regardless of the fact that the gaming community at large is probably just sick of being pillaged, raided, nickel and dimed and abused for all we're worth for far too long, and Baldur's Gate 3 just offers a no-nonsense, complete and pure experience from the get-go. Another thing I've been enjoying in the game so far is actually exploring and discovering secrets. Sure, you can hold alt to highlight interactables in your environment, but not everything gets revealed in this way, and if you pay a bit of close attention and are up for a bit of pixel hunting, acquire for yourself a light source from a torch or a spell, you can actually investigate the area, move objects around, and be surprised and gratified when you find something interesting. I'm way too big. It actually feels like you're investigating and exploring and not just mindlessly spamming your mouse to gain loot and power. In terms of Baldur's Gate 3's audio presentation, spells sound like spells. <laughs> Swords sound like swords. Can you do something really cool and kill him? Nope. The voice acting is superb. Fiddling toe rag. I fell. A spell shite. Fuck them. Fuck Solomon. 
and the last time I actually had a game soundtrack worm its way into my ear and stick around in my head for longer than a few seconds was just the other day when The Witcher 3 came out and oh my god that was 8 years ago. I'm reminded of how stunned and happy many gamers were back when Elden Ring came out and seeing people's reaction at how it just continually opened itself up quite literally as an ever expanding map that just wouldn't stop growing the more you explored and progressed in the game and the amount of content contained within it truly became quite staggering, not just in terms of quantity but in terms of quality. Baldur's Gate 3 has me feeling the same way but instead of being an expansive map although I stand to be corrected as I'm still meandering my way through Act 1, don't judge me, the amount of content crammed into the play space I've experienced so far is quite jaw smacking. At the end of the day, it's great to have a massive quality role playing game at our fingertips once more that not only respects gamers' wallets but is also a respectful tribute to the CRPGs of old to enjoy, get lost in and have fun with. And for me personally, what a pleasure it's been to create content for a game that doesn't crash to desktop or disconnect like that other game we cover on this channel for some reason. Oh fuck, the game just crashed. We just 30k boys. Oh well, never mind. Thank you channel Patreons and channel members for all your support. I realize this video is a massive pivot from our usual content, but I'm keen to see if I can push the channel in different directions now and then. If you enjoy my content and are interested in supporting the channel beyond a like and a subscribe, check the links in the description or consider the join button below. It genuinely helps me to continue producing these videos. And don't forget to check me out on Twitch as well. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you around. Cheers. Let's kill everything.